a nurse accused of murdering seven babies and the attempted murder of ten others. Lucy Letby is accused of murdering seven babies and attempting to murder ten more. Lucy Letby had written, I am evil, I did this, on a piece of paper found in her home. Hi guys, thank you for clicking onto my video. My name's Emily. Now today's case is of a nurse who not only stole the lives of eight babies, but attempted to take the lives of many more. Now let's just jump into it. Lucy Letby was born on the 4th of January 1990 to mother Susan Letby and father John Letby. They lived in Hereford, England. Lucy attended a local high school and by all counts it seems that she led a normal childhood. Once she left school she enrolled into the University of Chester to study child nursing. She had also managed to get herself a job at the Countess of Chester Hospital. She was training alongside her course. She did this for three years before graduating and finally getting a full-time job there in 2011. In 2012, Lucy was even the face of the campaign for the neonatal union that raised a whopping three million pounds. She claimed that she wanted to create a new neonatal unit for the space and the privacy for the parents and the siblings of the babies that were in there. But this was clearly some ploy to divert the fact that she wanted a quiet space to murder these babies in. During the trial of the murder and the attempted murder of these poor babies, the court had referred them to as child A through to child Q. So out of respect for the parents and the families, that's exactly what I'll be calling these precious babies today. But this just goes to show how many babies she attempted and also successfully took. And on the evening of the 7th of June 2015, child A and child B had been moved to the hospital due to their premature birth. Child A had collapsed just a little after 24 hours after being born. Lucy had taken over child A's care on the night shift on the 8th of June 2015 and being with her only 19 minutes, sadly child A had passed away. She had injected a fatal amount of air into his bloodstream. She herself had carried child A's body to the mortuary. She had said that it was one of the hardest things that she had ever had to do. What? Carry a baby that you murdered to the mortuary? Oh no, poor you. Dr Ogden, who had been the other nurse that had been looking after the twins that day, had said that child A had showed no signs of concern throughout the entire day. She said that he was handling well. She said that she had no concerns for him or his twin sister at all. Once she had taken the life of child A, she was then coming for his twin sister. And on the following night shift, she had injected her with a fatal amount of air into her bloodstream. With the twins' mother being in hospital after recovering from giving birth, a nurse had come by and told her what was going on with her little girl. And she had cried out, not my baby, not again. My heart just hurts for her. I can't even begin to imagine what she was going through right then. Both her mother and her father had gone down to see her at the neonatal unit, but thankfully enough, she had been stabilised. They had been told that she had had a rapid drop in her oxygen levels and her heart rate. Also, her skin had discoloured and moulted. One consultant had said that they'd never seen it before. Her mother, obviously concerned for her baby, stayed with her throughout the night. She said that she was restless, like she was almost trying to tell her something. The mother had been discharged from hospital, but she had come back every day at 9am to see her daughter. And in July 2015, child B had been discharged from hospital and very luckily enough had escaped any consequences from this evil woman's actions. Lucy Letby didn't stop there. And on the 14th of June 2015, child C, who was only five days old and only weighed one pound and 12 ounces. He had been born at 30 weeks and had collapsed and died before 6 a.m. Lucy, at the time though, was supposed to be looking after a more poorly baby in a different room. But instead, she injected air into Charles C's stomach, where he was unable to breathe and he suffered a cardiac arrest and he died. 
Lucy had reportedly gone home and started to search the parents of the child that she just murdered on Facebook. This is just some kind of sick and twisted fucking game for her. In the matter of days, Lucy had killed two babies and attempted and failed at the life of another. And on the 22nd of June 2015, Child D had been admitted into the hospital because she had gone floppy and lost her colour in her dad's arms. She had responded quite well to the treatment until her second collapse, where she had become quite distressed and was screaming and crying. The third time that this baby had collapsed, she sadly couldn't be revived. Lucy had injected air into her bloodstream and Child D too died from this sadistic nurse's actions. Lucy had messaged a few friends, basically saying that all these babies dying could all be easily explained as natural causes. Also saying that it was an element of their fate. Oh, she makes me so mad. She even had the audacity to search up Child D's parents on Facebook. She claiming she didn't know why she did it. Yeah, sounds like Billy bullshit to me, love. Her killing spree hadn't finished there, though. And Child E was in the neonatal unit due to being just under three pounds when he was born. He was one of twins. This time, though, Lucy was caught in her tracks, and on the 4th of August 2015, the mother of the newborn twins had come to the hospital to bring them milk, and she had walked in on Lucy attacking her son. Not that she actually knew it at the time. All she knew was her baby was distressed and bleeding from the mouth. Lucy had tried to reassure Child E's mother by saying, it's okay, it's just the tube down his throat irritating him. She stated, trust me, I'm a nurse. The manipulating wicked witch of the hospital abused every power that she had. And how was this mother to know that she had literally left her babies with the fucking devil herself? Child E had rapidly deteriorated and actually suffered a significant amount of blood loss. And this was because Lucy had injected air straight into his bloodstream. Less than five hours after Lucy was seen attacking him, he too had died. But Lucy wasn't done there, as there was still Child F, Child E's twin. And on the 5th of August 2015, this maniac had laced Child F's feeding bag with insulin. And this was only 24 hours after she had murdered his twin. But he thankfully survived this witch and was discharged and went home with his mum. Lucy had taken a sick interest into Child E and Child F's parents, searching them up on Facebook multiple times, one of the times being on Christmas Day. And when interviewed by police, she was asked why she searched the parents up on Facebook. And her answer was, maybe to see whether the baby was okay? What the fuck is actually wrong with you, lady? What, to see the baby is okay that you tried to murder? And what's she done there? Nay, nay. And on the 7th of September 2015, she attempted to take the life of child G. And in mid-August 2015, she had been moved to the Countess of Chester Hospital in the neonatal unit. She was doing really, really well. They even celebrated her being here for 100 days. But the very next day, Lucy got a hands hold of her. And she had fed her an excessive amount of milk and no doubt air via her feeding tube that ran through her nose. It had been reported that despite her size, she had projectile vomited out of her car onto the floor and onto a nearby chair. She then collapsed and stopped breathing. She was then taken to the hospital that she was born in, only to return on the 16th of September. She had only been safe for a few days because on the 21st of September 2015, Lucy had again fed baby G, and she projectile vomited twice, followed by her breathing stopping. Child G was then put on a monitor that had measured her heart rate levels and her oxygen sats. But by the afternoon, a nurse was responding to Lucy's call for help. But what she saw shook her up. The monitor had been completely switched off. Child G had been left severely disabled after the first two attempts 
on her little life. She then searched up Child G's parents on Facebook. One of them times being on the 21st of September, the day that she tried to take that baby's life, not once, but twice, and then left her permanently disabled. Does she not have no soul? Her next target was Child H, where she attempted to take her life twice. She had suffered two profound collapses on two successive night shifts. She had to be resuscitated by being given chest compressions and adrenaline. Child H had been transferred to a different hospital and luckily enough, her condition had dramatically improved. Before having to go back to the Countess of Chester Hospital, but she was eventually discharged and she was safe from Nurse Buckface. I swear this woman just got worse and worse. And on the 23rd of October 2015, Child I had died after four attempts of Lucy trying to take her life. She injected air into Child I's stomach via her feeding tube. This was only days after attempting to take the life of Child H. The second attempt, she had been reported to be standing in the darkened doorway of Child I's room, stating that she looked pale. Her colleague had come in and turned the light on, and Child I had appeared to be at the point of death and not breathing. She had collapsed and required chest compressions. This had happened in the early hours of the 23rd of October 2015. But thankfully, she was resuscitated and started to recover, to the point that she was showing signs of hunger. But less than an hour later, Child Eye's monitor had gone off, and a nurse had come rushing in, only to find Lucy stood by Child Eye's incubator. The nurse went to intervene, only to be told by Lucy that she'd be able to sort it. Child I had then collapsed and sadly died after many attempts to try and revive her were unsuccessful. An expert paediatrician who reviewed Child I's case had come to the conclusion that her constant deteriorations were due to the fact that she had been injected with an excessive amount of air into her stomach via her nasal tube. And on the final time, she injected air into her bloodstream. This had caused Child I to scream out in pain, with soon after collapsing and dying. The cheeky bitch had then sent the parents of Child I a sympathy card. Like, how dare you? You tortured their newborn who was in intensive care and murdered her, you no-soul demon. Only a few days after taking the life of Child I, Lucy had attempted to take the life of Child J. She had been born prematurely at 32 weeks and two days. She had been born in the Hospital of Hell, but she had been transferred to a different hospital for an operation for a bowel disorder. But sadly, she had been transferred back to the hospital where the demon nurse was on the 10th of November. Days after her arrival, her medical notes showed that she was doing really well. She was quite healthy. But that night, Lucy Letby was on shift and child J had collapsed without no explanation. She had two serious breathing problems that night, which had actually led to her being transferred into a high dependency room. And at 6.56 a.m. on the 27th of November, child J's oxygen levels had peaked so low that it was unrecordable and she went into a seizure. She had also gone into another seizure after Lucy had given her a glucose infusion. This happened almost minutes after being administrated. She had to be resuscitated with the help of the doctors and he said he couldn't explain why this had happened again. The medical expert that had reviewed Child J's case had some concerns that she had some form of obstruction to her airway, such as smothering. She again looked up the parents of the baby that she tried to kill on Facebook a month later. She must have been feeling in the Christmas spirit or scared or something because she actually managed to contain herself for a while. But this abruptly ended on the 17th of February 2016 where Child K had been born at 25 weeks weighing only 692 grams. Considering she was born very early, she had been considered quite healthy until the wicked witch of the hospital had been left alone with her. About an hour and a half after Child K was born, they were making arrangements to transfer her to a different hospital. This was a more specialised hospital on Merseyside suited to her needs. However, one doctor had found out that Lucy had been left alone with Child K. He said that he felt very uncomfortable about this, as he had his suspicions 
of the amount of coincidences of all the unexplained deaths and the serious collapses and all in the presence of Lucy Letby. He went to go find Lucy and see how Child K was getting along, but he found Lucy standing over Child K's incubator. He quickly noticed that her oxygen saturation levels were going dangerously low. He had asked her what was going on, what happened? And she said she just started deteriorating now. Yeah, and we all know why. He had also found out that Child K's breathing tube had been dislodged. This could have happened if she hadn't been born really early and sedated, preventing her from physically being able to do this. Later that day, Lucy was again at the side of Child K's cot calling out for help. It had been found that Child K's breathing tube had slipped too far down her throat. Now, I don't believe, not for one second, that this would have happened without the interference of Lucy. However, Child K was transferred to a different hospital, but sadly had died two days later. Lucy Letby was not accused of her murder. Now, I'm not going to lie, I feel that if Lucy hadn't got her hands on Child K, I feel that she might have had a better chance at survival. She again waited a while, but we can only assume that she did this to lay down low so no suspicion was on her. But on the 9th of April 2016, Lucy had set her sights on twin boys, Child L and Child M. She had been working on the day shift when she had given Child L a dose of insulin. And when Child L started to react to the drugs, she set her sights on his twin brother and she injected air into his circulation. It had been believed that she increased the dose of insulin because when she had given it to child F, he hadn't died like she'd hoped for. Child M had come very close to death, but thankfully both boys had survived her. Honestly, cannot believe how many lives of these innocent babies she had taken or tried to take. And I wish I could say she was done there, but she wasn't. And she tried to take child N's life three times, the first time being on the 3rd of June 2016. Child M was born at 34 weeks on the 2nd of June 2016, weighing only 3.6 pound. He was born at the hospital of hell. He did in fact have a mild haemophilia, I hope I'm saying that right, but this is a blood disorder. But considering all the factors, his clinical condition had been described as excellent. On the 3rd of June 2015, Child N's oxygen levels had dropped extremely low. But at 105 on the 3rd of June, Child N had a sudden dip in his blood oxygen levels. Levels that were extremely life-threatening. Child N started to scream and cry. This was unusual, especially for a premature baby to be making such noise. Only suggesting that he had been seriously harmed. And this was actually confirmed by medical experts. They said that Child N's deterioration had been consistent with some kind of inflicted injury and or him having received an injection of air. Oh, these poor bubbers, they are in intensive care because they are barely holding on to life as it is. And this bloody bitch comes along and just inflicts more pain on them. Child N did actually recover from this with all the help from the emergency doctors and nurses. But 12 days later, when it almost came time for him to be discharged, except for the treatment of jaundice, Lucy had decided to come by and say hello. But when the nurse in the room had turned her back, Lucy had said that she had lost oxygen and needed immediate assistance. However, the doctor couldn't get a breathing tube down child N's throat because they couldn't see through how bloody and swollen it was. Around 3pm that day, child N's oxygen levels had dropped that badly to the point it was life-threatening. They again tried to administrate a breathing tube, but it was still too bloody and still too swollen to get one down there. They again attempted to try and administrate a breathing tube, but they couldn't because it was still bleeding and swollen. Child M was transferred to a specialist hospital in Liverpool, and he actually recovered quite quickly, especially being nowhere near Lucy Letby. This can't be said for Child O though. He was one of triplets, and he had come into contact with Lucy on the 23rd of June 2016. He had been in a good and stable condition up until the afternoon of that day, where he had deteriorated quite rapidly and he had died sadly as a result. The Wicked Witch of the Hospital had not only injected an excessive amount of air into his nasal tube, 
but it was believed that she had caused some sort of trauma to child O's liver. Originally, his post-mortem had said that he had died from his blood clotting from a liver injury. His death was certified as natural causes and abdominal bleeding. But when we examined by an independent pathologist, in his opinion, he believed that the liver damage was not caused by the chest compressions. He had also concluded that child O had been given an excessive amount of air through their bloodstream via their nasal tube. And if you think she left it there, no. This evil woman wanted to feel her sadistic urge and she went for another one of the triplets. And on the 24th of June 2016, only a day after his triplet brother had been murdered, child P was Lucy's next victim and he started to deteriorate rapidly. So preparations were made for child P to be moved to a more specialised hospital. And when Lucy found out, she made the most unforgettable comment. She said, he's not leaving here alive, is he? Soon after, child P had collapsed and died. This was a result of Lucy injecting air into his stomach, which compromised his breathing, causing him to collapse and die. I'm honestly so mind blown. How can you even want to do this to babies? And not just any babies, the babies that were in intensive care. You targeted lone babies, you targeted twins, you targeted triplets. How could you want to put a baby through so much pain, let alone their parents, their family, and some of them grieving more than one loss? She didn't care though. And on the 25th of June 2016, the day after she had killed child P, she attempted to take the life of child Q. She injected child Q with an excessive amount of air and some kind of clear fluid, which is suspected to be either possibly water or saline or saline, however you say it. This was injected into his stomach via his nasal tube, but thankfully he did recover. He had been transferred to another hospital where he made a full and rapid recovery. After this, Lucy Letby was put under suspicion after too many deaths and too many serious collapses had happened in the presence of her. It was too much of a coincidence, so she had been assigned to clerical duties where she had no access to children or no access to these things that she was using to murder these poor babies. She remained on them duties until the 3rd of July 2016, where she was arrested on suspicion of eight counts of murder and six counts of attempted murder. She was given bail pending further inquiries, but fuck knows why though, she needed certifying a nut case the day she walked into the hospital. She was again arrested in 2019 for the eight murders and now nine attempted murders. She was again released out on bail pending further inquiries. But her final day of freedom came in November of 2020, where Lucy Letby was charged for the murder of eight babies and the attempted murder on 10 babies. Her trial began on the 10th of October 2022, which is obviously only a couple of weeks ago. And the coward that she is has of course pled not guilty to every single one of the charges. During some of the trial, it was revealed that Lucy had written quite a fair few post-it notes and had just left them hanging around the house. And the one that was found in her house read, There are no words. I am an awful person. I pay every day for that. No hope. I can't breathe. I can't focus. I'll never have children or marry. I'll never know what it's like to have a family. Kill myself right now. Overwhelming fear. I haven't done anything wrong. Police investigation. Forget slander, discrimination, victimisation. Despair, panic. Fear, lost. Hate. Hate myself so much. All getting so much. Everything taking over my life. I feel very alone and scared. What does the future hold? How can I get through it? How can things ever be like the way they were? They won't. I don't deserve to live. I did this. Why me? I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough to take care of them. I am a horrible person. I don't deserve mum or dad. This world is better off without me. I am evil. I did this. Just wow. And that was all on one post-it note. 
Her brain must have been going like a million miles an hour and damn straight, so it should. And the answer to all your questions is you're just about to receive your well-deserved karma, lady. But as of now, the trial of Lucy Letby still continues. So I'll have to update you on a different video when I ever have more information or she's been sentenced. But in the meantime, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this case. I think she should have the book thrown at her and never see the light of day again for what she'd done to them poor babies. But that's it guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and until next time, bye!